Oh, um, yeah, we're working on the testnet deployment. You know, choosing servers, it's, it's hard. It's actually like, the, the, well, let me rephrase that. When you want to get servers, it is so unbelievably confusing the number of options that are available to you. Like if I, if I went to an actual, you know, let's say I went to Acme Micro to go buy a bunch of servers, I know I want 64 core epics with, you know, maybe a terabyte or two of RAM just for laughs. And if, if the loads are, if the sizes are small enough, I want Optane SSDs because they have the lowest latency and the highest 4K random read rate. And then, I, you know, so that's my memory. That's my, and you obviously get error correcting ECC RAM. So that's my CPUs. That's my RAM. That's my hard drives. I'm good to go. But then you, then you go into this virtual crap and then they abstract all that and they, and you know, they won't give, they, they don't tell you, they barely tell you what chip you're getting. So give me a model number. What model number chip am I getting with a, this abstracted large instance, whatever this crap, like tell me what CPU I'm getting, please tell me what Ram I'm getting. What's the speed on the Ram? Like the stuff that as a retail user you care about in, in the server world, they're just, they've abstracted it to the point where you don't know what you're getting. So am I getting Zen 3 Epic chips or not? Or, or Gen 3, whatever you want to call it. Am I getting Gen 3 Epic chips or not? And it just sucks to have to beat this information out of the vendors. It's, you know, whatever. The software is done, right? So we just want to show it on uh, GitLab is what we're using. We had to make new directories and, you know, new access controls so that it was sanitized and ready for the public. I haven't had I haven't had a chance to look where that's at. I don't think that's going to take like longer than a day or two. But I don't think that we want to release that code and have people compiling it and running their own testnet version until we have seeded it with you know some high performant things so that everyone can like on ramp and and bootstrap their their nodes from a good source. So <clears throat> I don't think we can actually release the code in the GitLab until there's some servers out there that are pretty hardcore so that those can seed everybody else. That's pretty much where we're at. And I really want to like, I really want to do that as quickly as possible because when you see the code, you're going to be impressed. It's really good code. It works. It's been working in private test net for a good long while now. Um, and I want everyone to be able to see that. And I also want people to notice that we've already improved the geth code that Ethereum uses in their main net because our improvements have been accepted to it. So I want to brag about that. Look how good our devs are. Look how good our code is. Look, we're saving the environment. No more energy wasting. Look, it's higher throughput, lower fees, lower latency, um, and better game theory. So you don't you don't have to have 32 Ethereum to be a staker, and you, you can just anybody can be a staker. Just delegating their stake with a little bit of uh, you know, just make a transaction. It's just better. It's better game mechanics. It's better throughput. It's just better pretty much everything, I guess. I mean, it doesn't have as many dApps being built on it yet because it doesn't exist yet. Let's see, let's get that. Let's get the test net out there and then dApp guys can start building against it. For instance, hex.com. It would be nice to have a test net to build against so that you could, you know, show here's your hex on the Ethereum network and here's your hex on the Pulse network. It's gonna be really cool.